Hello and welcome to the second part of my top 10 list of my personal pick of my personal favorite animes. I am just going to assume that you actually watched the first video, so I'm not going to recount for anything. That being said, it's time to be cool. Number five, Cowboy Bebop. Don't pretend otherwise. You all knew it. You all knew it had to come up somewhere on this list. This is the one animated series everyone agrees on rocks. Even people who usually don't like anime. Even people who usually don't like science fiction. Cowboy Bebop is still the shit. It's basically about space cowboys, so imagine Firefly, but 20% cooler. It follows the story of the character Spike, also called Fluffy Hair. I mean, look at that hair. It looks so nice, light and fluffy. Fluffy! <clears throat> anyway, he is a space bounty hunter. Together with his crew consisting of Faye and Ed and this guy, they are out to hunt bounty hits. Things are more complicated than that though, as Spike has a very messy history and keeps on getting visions of his own death in the future. Then there is this mysterious woman by the name of Julia, whom he sees in his vision but refuses to talk about. Faye is a former patient whom has been cryogenically frozen but as a wrestler don't remember her past, who she is or where she comes from, and it's it. And all of these unique personalities and personal histories neatly weave together in this amazing unique style, episode from episode. Some of them are stand alone and some of them ties together in this beautifully weaved together arc in only 26 neatly planned out and put together episodes. Cowboy Bebop, on top of having top-notch stories and characters, just have incredible atmosphere, held a lot by the incredible animation and beautiful, incredibly beautiful music, always putting up the perfect mood. And then of course, we can never forget one of the most memorable endings to any show ever. And no! I'm not going to spoil the ending for you. Go watch it yourself. Jeez. It's only 20 episodes. It's not the longest series in the entire world. Number four. I want to change the world. Inuyasha. I know, I know. A lot and a lot of people is going to disagree with whatever I am putting about. Cowboy B, but, but remember, this is my personal preferences, and while Inuyasha just happens to play into things I really enjoy, and I really enjoy fantasy, adventure, fairy tales, magic, big worlds, everything that Inuyasha is about. Written by the same author as Ranma One Hell, this is a series that wishes to take itself a bit more serious than Ranma did. It follows the high school girl Kagomi, whom is the reincarnation of an old priestess whom died protecting the powerful Seacon Duel. Kagome falls into a well and travels back in time to feudal Japan, where she by accident destroys the Seacon Duel her former self died to protect. Problem just is that each individual shot of this duel is a massive danger and gives any demon who has it extra strength. And it is now up to Kagomi to team up with the half demon Inuyasha to collect all of the duel shards and eventually purify the second duel, a thing only Kagomi can do. It's a big fantasy adventure piece where Kagomi must travel the land and talk with all kinds of demons to fulfill her journey. It of course has a way darker edge to it than Ranma and a connected story and is way more mature as it explores dark concepts about love and the misuse of power. But at the same time, it maintains that cocky humor that a shonen anime must have. 
And as Ranma came before it from the same writer, you know that sometimes this anime is indeed freaking hilarious, as it invites you into the world with funny and likeable characters. Sometimes it's funny, and sometimes it's scary, and sometimes it's freaking sad. Neatly tied together. And what especially helped me to put this anime so high on the list is that recently they finished the thing! Yay! The original Inuyasha anime was cut short and finished before the manga did, but last year a final season came out called The Final Chapter, where all the plot lines were fulfilled and tied together, and it was glorious. Number 3 Puella Magic Madoka The term magical girl is an entire genre in itself. Sailor Moon, Tokyo Mew Mew, Powerpuff Girls C, Witch, etc, etc, it's all the same thing. A bunch of girls are granted magical powers and have to defend the world together as a group. They all have like a magical guiding pet, a transformer sequence that put them in small knee-high dresses that really doesn't look ideal for combat, whatever. Personalized special weapons, special attacks you have to shout out before they work for some reason. There are certain rules to this that's repeated over and over and over. Some of these shows are pretty damn good. Some of them are so pink and lollipop sweet that it is sickening. But none of them can escape from the fact that they are all basically the same. Remember how in the first part of this video I talked about how Princess Tutu managed to take something old and then make it new by putting a completely new original spin on things? In steps Puella Magic Maruga, which is everything you did not expect going in. It's emotional, it's dark, it's about the characters and their heavy role, it's about sacrifice, about hopelessness, about the price of being a magical girl in this universe. And all is told in a neat sum of 12 episodes. 12 amazingly well-crafted episodes, telling a firm story from episode 1 to the last where the main character undergoes a long soul journey to be ready for what needs to be done. This series is simply beautiful. Beautiful and breathtaking in animation, in storytelling, in characters, in music, in themes, in everything. It's perfect. It's an experience to sit through this anime and to sit through it twice is twice the experience. I would recommend this one to everyone who wants to go check out anime or manga, even guys, because this series is not as girly as you would think. It is actually really gender neutral, which is a big plus. And it's a pretty easy way to start out, as the series is only 12 episodes. That is pretty ideal, so go check that one out. Number 2 Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood And this is kind of important to remember, there are two different Full Metal Alchemist series. The one just called Full Metal Alchemist, which deviates quite a lot from the manga and is a show that originally lost my interest a few episodes in. And this one, that came out a bit later, but that sticks way closer to the manga and therefore has a way more well connected and well thought out story. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Remember that, Brotherhood. Following the story of the two Elric brothers, Edward and Alphonse, who is on a hunt to find a Philosopher's Stone to restore the younger brothers Alphonse's body. See, due to a failed experiment about resurrecting their dead mother, Alphonse's body got taken and to save his life, Edward bound his soul to this empty armor that Alphonse is now stuck inside. Sounds straightforward, doesn't it, and well, a pretty interesting concept in itself. That would be too easy if that was it. 
and I can't possibly cover it all here. The further the series goes, the less important the brother's personal problems becomes as intrigues, demons and all sort of other crap comes to pester them. Every small thing that happens in this series ends up having huge consequences and the trouble the brothers are on demands more sacrificing than you would think to begin with. The idea of alchemy is equivalent exchange. Using this kind of magic, alchemists can transform any objects into other objects. Every time you create something though, something else of equal value must be giving up. Which is the big theme of the show? Nobody walks away without paying some kind of a price. Nobody gets something without having to give something up. Nothing is won without something else of equal value being lost. It dwells into the consequences of war and explores the fact that war is not a case of black and white, a hero army fighting a villain, but that both sides are their own victim and that both sides must pay a price from participating in the first place. Even the huge monsters is revealed to be victims of their own ambitions. It is a tightly written story where each storyline is there for a reason. Each little incident ends up being important and ties together beautifully for a perfectly written series. It goes to pretty damn dark places, not because of blood, but because of the themes. But at the same time, it maintains a very good sense of humor and knows exactly when to play up the drama and when to play up the humor. Once again, this series is just beautifully animated and beautifully scored. It is masterfully written and a true experience for anyone to watch. I need to fight him, and you can't talk me out of it. Have you lost your mind? Did you forget the way he tore you apart in East City? Ooh, sounds like you're kind of scared of Big Bad Scar. I'm not surprised considering how useless you were against him. <laughs> that wasn't my fault. It was raining that day. Was it raining when you got beat up and sent to the hospital? <laughs> you're still useless. And that, my friends, leave me with my number one favorite anime of all time pick. But before we get into that, why not make some honorable mentions about some other animes that I enjoy but didn't make it to this list. Naruto. I enjoyed Naruto very much as a child. It was one of the first mangas I bought and for a time I followed it religiously in television. But as the series went on, I literally lost interest and is no longer watching. I don't even want to know how it ends. That is why it is not on this list. Or on High School Host Club. It's just one of those things that makes me smile. It's so cute and it's so happy. It's almost as crazy as Rhyme at One Half. If you need to just sit back and smile, this is for you. The Count of Monte Cristo, a beautifully or uniquely animated series on 22 episodes. A strong, tightly written story about the mysterious Count of Monte Cristo, betrayal and revenge, and of course, based on the original story by Alice Dumas about the Count of Monte Cristo, just in future, just sticks surprisingly well to the book. And is a good new take on it. Case Closed. A series of mystery stories following the young Konichi who was poisoned and as a result turned into an 8 year old boy who must now hide his true identity while solving multiple crimes. Why is it not on this list? Well, in spite of starting off very strong, it has just been going on for far too long now and should just end already. So then, I guess it's time for my favorite anime of all time. Can anybody guess what it is? Anybody? Anybody at all? Well, yeah, it's One Piece. Ka tsute, kono yo no subete o teni ireta densetsu no kaidoku o Gold Roger. Kare no shininiwa ni hanatta hitokoto wa hitobito o umi e to karikateta. Okay, 
Yo wa masa ni dai kaizoku jidai. It's not one of the first mangas I ever read. I don't have any special connection or story tied to it. All I can say is that I love One Piece so very much. Following the story of the young monkey D. Luffy who wishes to be the next pirate king, he simply sets sail and one by one collects a crew to go on adventures on the most dangerous ocean in the world, fighting other pirates, marines, monsters, magical creatures, robots, zombies, you name it. One Piece is one of the longest running animes that has ever been, but you know what? Funny enough! Unlike Naruto and Case Closed and even Pokemon that has been running for far too long and should have ended a very long time ago, One Piece somehow manages to keep itself fresh and exciting all the way through. Even now I am excitedly following the newest One Piece chapters, dying for more. One Piece is an absolutely ridiculous series. With a high energy and a brilliant sense of humor. It's about enjoying yourself and having a good time while laughing at all the ridiculous, bizarre things happening all around the place. It's a madhouse! <laughs> One piece is just a thing that makes me so happy and then it makes me so sad and then it makes me happy it is truly a rarity to find a series that can make me laugh that hard and then make me cry so much and then make me laugh so hard the next moment again and it just goes from one thing to the other flawlessly you don't even notice that it's happening you just cry and laugh and cry and laugh again and that comes from the characters the characters are absolutely ridiculous and just as bizarre as the world they live in but on the same time they are actually all of them so three-dimensional they go through pain and suffering and you end up caring so much and then they laugh and sing afterwards and you laugh and sing with them on top of that this show is so imaginative. It has a concept called devil fruit. That means when you eat a devil fruit, you can get a magical superpower that leaves room for many imaginative unique fights. The setting can also be whatever you want it to be. A frozen wind island, a desert island, a kingdom in the sky, a zombie forest, an island deep underwater, habited by fishermen and mermaids, you name it. Own a series that can go even wider than this in where you want to go is Doctor Who. But as this is animated, this can get even crazier because there are no limits. In One Piece, only your own imagination is the limit for whatever crazy stuff might happen. But still, after all of this time, after an entire one and a half decade and even more it always feels fresh always feels new is incredibly unique and completely its own 
and it always has its heart exactly where it needs to be. A very large heart. Chopper, why did you have to be so sad? Why did you have to make me cry so hard, you little reindeer who ate a magical fruit that gave you human abilities and is the doctor of the strawhead pirates? It makes sense in context! Jeez! Of course, when One Piece has run so long, it isn't entirely flawless. For instance, it takes a while for it to become really good. I mean, yeah, sure, the beginning is enjoyable in its own right, but it's just not the later series, which is freaking fantastic. I guess it's because the beginning of the series is slowly introducing the characters and then it's first later when we really learn to know them and care so much about these characters that when they go through stuff it feels so much more heartbreaking. The most heartbreaking things in this entire series is when the main characters go through stuff like in the Water 7 arc or in the Sabodai arc. People who have watched the series know what I'm talking about. It's so freaking sad. <laughs> but thankfully, they get together again and then we're happy. And I'm happy. And the series is happy. ハハハハ。ああ、なった。海賊狩りの泥、懸賞金 黒足の惨事、写真入手失敗、検証金I could talk way more about this series. I could talk forever about this series. Which I might do at some point. But anyway, this was my pick of my favorite enemies of all time. And if you feel any different, I told you once. This list was made of my personal preferences. You don't have to share it. If you're really that unhappy with it, go make your own list. Yes!